So in this video today, we're going to have a look at a new arrow that um, we've just had produce called the Eros. So this one here is a sixth hour straightness um, carbon arrow. They come out pre-fletched, so depending on the spine that you get, um, you'll have different colours of uh, fletchings on the arrows. Uh, at the moment, they come in a 1500 spine down to a 500 spine. So this arrow is designed to basically be um, an entry level to mid range kind of arrow. So it's designed for someone who's starting off in target archery with a recurve or compound bow or a recurve bare bow. They're not designed for hunting, but it's something that out of a lighter weight recurve you probably could put an outsert on and use for that purpose. We didn't design them to be a particularly light arrow, they come in very similar uh, weight to the carbon one. Um, and their competitors are the Skylon arrows and also the carbon one arrow. So these are definitely more of a price point arrow. They're $100 a dozen, or um, well we actually sell them individually as well. So the kind of person that'd be wanting to get an arrow like this would be someone starting off in the sport, um, or even a higher ranking archer that's shooting something like, um, you know, a really high end Eastern or Carbon Express parallel shaft, and you're not 100% sure what spine you should be shooting out of your bow. Unlike other arrows where you have to buy them by the dozen, you could buy three of these or six of these in a specific arrow spine and then trial it on your bow to then know whether a 600 spine or a 900 spine or a 700 spine suits your bow best before going out and spending four or $500 on a set of arrows you're not 100% sure of the spine. The other use for these is as a club arrow. So if you've got um, your local, uh, your local Archery Australia club or your club within your state or a local camp facility or a school, these are the kind of arrows you can use for that as well. So traditionally in the past, uh, aluminium arrows such as like an Eastern Jazz arrow or a double X75 is generally the choice for a lot of clubs. The trouble with those is they usually come as your shafts and you've got to buy your points separately and you've got to build them. These just come out of the box, you cut them, glue your points in and they're ready to shoot. So you're saving a lot of time at club level having to build the arrows when they come in. Especially if you're a club that's running a beginner's course with 20 or 30 people and you've got to have 100 arrows on the line. If you've got to individually fletch all of those, it's going to take a very long time. So these are awesome in that they come pretty much ready to go. We are also stocking the components from these, so the fletchers, knocks and the points. And they're a lot cheaper than buying um, you know, genuine Eastern components or something like that too. So the upkeep on these arrows is really good as well. The test we're going to do today is we're going to get Maddie to shoot three of the new arrows and three of her carbon ones, both same spine cut down to the same length at 30 meters and then we're going to see which one groups the best um, just to give you an idea, a practical idea of how these arrows will perform against um, established arrows in the market. So our setup for the test is not very traditional but we figured it's going to work. I'll be aiming at this target here with every shot I do. Um, that takes out any placebo effect, whether I pull out a carbon one or an arrow, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to load it in and shoot it. Um, we find that the arrows are going a little bit further left and we've just centered these to where the arrows are grouping on the target, just from my aiming point. Um, so the carbon ones, my sights are a little bit high right now and we're not going to move it. So that takes out any variables as well. I'm just aiming in one spot and the arrows will land where they land and then we'll see how the groupings go. So after 12 ends, we found out that my center group for the carbon ones was actually a bit off from where we judged it to be. Um, so the group is centered around the eight ring. Um, whereas the arrows, we pretty much nailed the center of the group. Um, in terms of variation, like grouping wise, they're looking pretty similar. I had some iffy shots. We've taken out, I think, was it one? One of each. Yeah. One of each. I had a bad shot with the arrows. I had a really bad shot with the carbon ones. We took those out and just went with the groupings we had. And from Alex's measurements, what we found. So you've got the um, carbon ones have 26 centimeters of vertical difference by 14 
horizontal, and the Eros have got about 23.5 centimeters of vertical um, difference in the group, and about 14 to 15 centimeters horizontal. So, not really that much, yeah. No, not too much difference there. Um, I might find maybe the carbon one. I don't know, it's, it's, there's a really good grouping, especially in the centre here with the Eros. Eros. Um, and where's the carbon ones? If you look at the target, it looks better, but when you actually measure it, like you've got more of a cluster, but mm. there's certainly more runaway shots with the carbon ones than are with the Eros. Like it's a larger group, but it's more kind of centred. Like I think they're equally forgiving. Yeah. In that in that sense, like no difference whatsoever in yes. terms of forgiveness. So as a practical test, basically when you're looking at two and a half times the price for a set of full set of carbon ones, so two hundred and fifty dollars with as components before you've even built it, versus a hundred dollars pre-made, there's very very little difference. I mean we're really searching to try and find a noticeable difference in the group, and that's after so you just shot seventy two arrows. Yeah. Yeah, so we shot 36 with both of them. Um, so that's a full round's worth. So indoors, no wind, no variables, and there's very, very little difference between the two. So we're going to have a look at the straightness of the carbon ones versus the arrows now. So I've got three carbon ones here at random. Uh, Always onto the straightness tester. As I spin that, you can see how the dial moves as we work our way around the arrow. So carbon ones are advertised as having a 3,000 straightness, um, whereas Eros are a 6,000 straightness. So we should expect to see essentially double the movement between the arrows. So there's another carbon one. You can tell they're pretty good. Um, you could put a top of the line target arrow in here and you're still going to get movement. Um, it's, you're never going to get exact around the arrow. Um, a consistency, there's always going to be a little bit of movement. Such so a three carbon ones. Now, if we put in three of the arrows into here, spin those. We've got a little bit more. We're not we're not talking a whole lot there. Let's try another one. Maybe a tiny bit more. I mean, these are advertised as a six hour versus three thousand. So we should see double the amount of movement on the arm, the cheaper arrows, but we're not really seeing seeing that as I move those. That one's probably very similar to the carbon ones, really. So straightness wise, they're very competitive, especially at um, yeah, literally a third of the price. So we just finished the practical test of the carbon ones versus the arrows. Um, I'll put up a photo of these two targets that we've got here, but there's very little difference. Um, when you actually multiply the length by the width of the group, the arrows actually come out slightly ahead. Um, but we're only talking about a centimetre or two centimetres or so, which is not significant given the size of the group and the amount of arrows that we shot. So they're very, very similar. If we look at some of the pros and cons between the two, uh, one of the pros of the arrows is that they come out pre-made. So like I said earlier, you don't have to put the time into fletching. When you're a starting archer and you don't really kind of know what you're looking for and you're just trying to get your first setup, it's really, really tough to buy arrow shafts, the right points, pin knocks or not pin knocks, the right knocks, the right groove, your fletches, the right fletch length, maybe a fletching jig to put it all together or paying a shop to build it for you. And when you start archery, the most common thing you're gonna break or lose is your arrows. So you wanna start off as cheap as possible. That's why these are really, really good because you can literally order them in, as an individual. So if you buy a dozen arrows and you break four, you can buy four more. If you move up in bow weight and you want to try some different arrows, you can buy three of each and try them. You're not stuck into buying a dozen match shafts. You can buy them as you go. A con is also the fact that they're pre-made. So if you want to customize these as you get them and you want to fletch them with a different type of vein, you've got to strip them off and kind of bring them back to um, a bare shaft. Not that big a deal, but it might be considered a negative by some people. We are gonna look at bringing them out 
these out just as shafts if people do want to build them themselves in the future. But for now, they're, um, they're just available in a pre-made. Another pro is like we said earlier, half the price of a carbon one. So carbon ones, you pay about $180 for shafts. By the time you add your points, pins, knocks, fletches, the whole lot, you're up to around the $250 mark. These come out as they are with your points loose for about $100 a dozen, which is really, really cost effective, um, especially as a starting archer. Most people starting out um, with a recurve or a um, compound want to keep around like the $400, $500 mark. And if you're spending half of that on arrows, which like I said earlier, the most likely thing you're going to break, it really stacks the odds up against you. One of the cons again, looking at the arrows, is that they're Chinese made. This could be viewed as a con. Um, I mean, a lot of people kind of look at Chinese made products as inferior. If you look into a lot of archery brands, you'll find a lot of things come out of China. It definitely isn't a negative, um, especially because it obviously means the price point stays lower. As we've seen just before, the quality of these arrows is very, very similar to our American made carbon ones. So some, may, some people might consider that a negative thing. I think it's better for us, especially being in Australia, getting things over from China is a lot cheaper than shipping them from America. So it just keeps all the costs a lot lower for, um, for the starting archer or the club looking to get different arrows. Uh, benefit again of these arrows is you get your points included. So like I said, you've got everything there ready to go. Uh, we actually set these up with longer veins. So traditionally the arrows on the market before for entry level archers, had these really short, like 175 or one and three quarter inch veins. The trouble with that is you're getting a bit more, getting a bit more speed, a little bit less drag. But when you're first starting to shoot, you want as much forgiveness as possible on your arrow. So you don't want these really little short stubby veins. As a target archer, and if you shot for six months, 12 months, you're kind of progressing through the sport. Absolutely, you can go to these shorter veins, they'll give you less drag, less wind drift, all that stuff. When you're starting, you want the arrow to help you as much as possible. And the longer veins that we put on these arrows are designed to help stabilize the arrow for you a lot faster. Uh, the other thing you can do with these too, if you want to upgrade them, they actually fit Eastern components too. So the carbon one components will fit into these. You've got to make sure they're the right um, size of the carbon one component, but you can put a pin and a point into these arrows. So if you wanted to say run a biter pin knock or an Eastern pin knock, you can put a pin straight into these as well, or a heavier point, or just a better tolerance of point, you can put an Eastern point into this as well. So you've got that option to actually upgrade the arrows as you go as well. Uh, again, because they um, fit those parts, it's because they've got a, a consistent inner diameter. So the wall thickness of the arrow changes as you change in the spine, but the inner diameter of the carbon is consistent, so it'll allow you to fit all those components too. And yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just an easy option for people looking to get into the sport. We've only had them in the store for a little while now and they've been very popular because when people have bought a bow, we can just look at the Eastern chart, check their spine and go, yep, how many do you want? Six or 12, chuck the points in, they're ready to go. A lot of the time we don't even cut them down just because when you're starting, uh, if you have an arrow that hits a rock or a tree and you kind of splinter the front of the arrow a little bit, later on you can come get them cut down and keep reusing them as well. They're a really, really um, popular arrow so far for us. Um, and this is something that we will be offering discounts to clubs around Australia as well. So get in contact if this is something you wanna be stocking in your club. Um, we're gonna be using these for all of our come and tries and beginners courses from now on as well, because price wise, they compare a lot better to the aluminium arrows on the market, which bend and you have to constantly maintain. Um, yeah, they've just been really good for us. The testing showed that they're doing exactly what we want them to do and they'll be available at elizaarchery.com.